Many once great cities of the Middle Ages have been lost over time. It could have been through natural disaster, war, or just because they were victims of their own success. Let's travel back in time now to rediscover some of these cities that were once vibrant hubs for trade, culture, and knowledge, and find out about their enigmatic disappearance from history. Welcome to Medieval Madness. Dunwich. The North Sea has a fearsome reputation and pounds the east coast of England. Situated on that coast, Dunwich is a natural harbour and was once a thriving centre for religion, trade, shipbuilding, and fishing, with an economy to rival any other city in the land, at least during the 11th to the 14th centuries. But over time, the sea chewed away at the eastern coast, sometimes nibbling little bits and at other times taking great big bites out of it. Dunwich was described as the capital of the Kingdom of the East Angles during the Anglo-Saxon period, as it was the seat of bishops between the 7th and 9th centuries, starting with Felix and ending with Ethelwald until around 870 when Dunwich was overrun by pagan Danes. Last Kingdom fans, put your hands up. In 1096, when the Doomsday Book was produced, the manuscript recorded a great survey of much of England and listed Dunwich as having three churches and a population of around 3,000. This figure included 24 Frankie people from France who had migrated and settled there after the Norman Conquest. Three more parish churches were built along with two monasteries, one Franciscan and one Dominican, a leper house and a preceptory of the Knights Templar built around 1189, and similar to Temple Church in London. Interstellar fans, put your hands up. During the 12th century, Dunwich arrived at the highest zenith of greatness to increase of inhabitants, commerce and wealth. Fishing was an essential industry, and boats went as far as Iceland for cod whilst catching sprat and herring in more local waters. Shipbuilding was also an important enterprise, and vessels from Dunwich traded all around the British coast and over in Europe. In 1229, King Henry III asked for 40 ships from Dunwich to be well equipped with all kinds of armament, good steersmen, and manners, to be used during his invasion of France. The start of Dunwich's decline began in 1286 when the port was hit by a storm surge, quote, on the night after New Year's Day, through the vehemence of the winds and violence of the sea, several churches were overthrown and destroyed. Around the year 1350, a great part of the town and upwards of 400 houses with certain shops and windmills were devoured by the sea, and two churches were overthrown by the waves. In 1570, there was incredible damage, and in 1677, the sea reached the marketplace. Still there today, on the Suffolk coast, Dunwich, once a thriving port the size of London's Square Mile, is now a small village because of the hundreds of years of devastating coastal erosion and the, quote, irresistible force of the undermining surges. Almost all of the buildings, including the eight churches that were there in the 13th century, no longer exist, although the ruins of the Franciscan Priory of Great Friars and St. James Leper Hospital can still be seen. It is said that when the tide is just right, the sound of tolling church bells can be heard from beneath the waves. Anger Now located in present-day Cambodia, Southeast Asia, this medieval city was at the heart of the Hindu-Buddhist Khmer Empire that flourished between the 9th and 15th centuries. Anger was thought to have been as large as the Cambodian capital of Phnom Penh is today. That is an area of 262 square miles and is not the only lost city around there. In fact, some experts believe that the huge, densely populated cities there would have made the Khmer Empire the largest on Earth during the Middle Ages. The Khmer was known as a hydraulic empire, a government or social structure that maintained power by controlling access to water, and archaeologists have found elaborate water systems there. And as the seat of the Khmer Empire, Angkor was a vibrant center for culture, architecture, and art. One impressive building still stands, the iconic Angkor Wat Temple. Sitting within a complex of 402 acres, the temple is considered to be the largest religious structure in the world. Angkor was sacked and looted by invaders in 1431, although the civilization had been in steady decline during the 13th and 14th centuries. Theories for the fall and abandonment of the city include political instability, neglect of the waterways and natural disasters such as the bubonic plague or flooding from monsoons. The Temple of Angkor Wat remained occupied as a Buddhist shrine. Cahokia 
During the Middle Ages, Cahokia was the largest pre-Columbian city in North America. Standing directly across from the Mississippi River from what is now St. Louis, Missouri, this city existed between the 11th and 14th centuries. In 1050, when the city was at its height, it was larger than London or Paris at that time, with a population of around 30,000 people. Then there were about 120 earthen mounds with a great variety of sizes, shapes, and uses. The Mississippian culture began more than a thousand years before contact with Europeans, and Cahokia was the society's largest and most influential settlement. Mound building at the huge complex began around 900 CE. Excavation and earth transportation would have taken decades, but the result was a complex city of flat ceremonial plazas arranged around these central mounds with hundreds of interconnected pathways and courtyards. Because the Mississippians left no written record, the original name of the city is unknown, so it was named after the local Cahokia tribe. During the last 50 years of the 12th century, the population of Cahokia increased from around 2,000 to somewhere between 10 and 15,000 people. But sometime in the 13th century, the city went into decline for unknown reasons, and the settlement was abandoned around 1350. It has been speculated that this could have been due to environmental factors, such as overhunting, flooding, drought, or invasion. Great Zimbabwe This medieval stone city was located near to what is now present-day Masvingo, Zimbabwe. The city was built between 1100 and 1450 CE and is thought to be the work of the Shona people, a Bantu ethnic group indigenous to Zimbabwe, as well as other people who were moving back and forth across the area. Zimbabwe means stone house in Shona. The large and once imposing stone city covered an area of 2.79 square miles and could have accommodated up to 18,000 people at its height. Construction began in the 11th century, and building went on for over 300 years. It is believed that Great Zimbabwe was once a royal palace and central to political power in the area. In 1531, the captain of a Portuguese garrison named Vicente Pegado was the first person to document the city, describing it as, quote, a fortress built of stones of marvelous size, and there appears to be no mortar joining them. This edifice is almost surrounded by hills, upon which are others resembling it, in the fashion of stone and the absence of mortar, and one of them is a tower more than 12 fathoms high. The natives of this country call these edifices Simbael, which, according to their language, signifies court. Many of these mortarless stone walls are still standing and are testament to the craftsmanship that went into their construction, as each rock was carefully chosen to slot in perfectly with the next and hold the shape naturally. Evidence suggests that Great Zimbabwe was a centre for trade as artefacts from China, Persia and Arabia have been found at the site. Again, the reason for abandonment of the city around 1450 is not known, with political unrest or a depletion of resources being cited as potential causes. Ani. Often referred to as the City of 1001 Churches, between 961 and 1045, Ani was the capital of the Bagratrid Armenian Kingdom that covered much of present-day Armenia and eastern Turkey. A place of significant influence both culturally and religiously, Ani became the capital after its expansion in the 10th century with a diverse population. By the beginning of the 11th century, it is thought to have housed up to 100,000 people. Because Ani lay upon a branch of the Silk Road, it grew in size and wealth and the city became an important trading centre. So far, 50 churches, 33 cave chapels and 20 chapels have been discovered in the ruins at Ani. It has been argued that Ani Cathedral, with its ribbed vaulting, influenced similar early Gothic structures in Europe. The decline of the city began with the invasion of the Islamic Seljuk army in 1064. A Turkish historian described the devastation as, quote, the army entered the city, massacred its inhabitants, pillaged and burned it, leaving it in ruins and taking prisoner all those who remained alive. The dead bodies were so many that they blocked the streets. One could not go anywhere without stepping over them. And the number of prisoners was not less than 50,000 souls. I was determined to enter the city and see the destruction with my own eyes. I tried to find a street in which I would not have to walk over the corpses, but that was impossible. 
In 1236, the Mongols captured and sacked the city, and then a devastating earthquake hit in 1319 and marked Ani's decline, leaving the once great city a sparsely populated small town that was eventually abandoned. Chikayanitsa Situated on the Yucatan Peninsula in present-day Mexico, Chicane Itza was a prominent Maya city and a major economic power throughout the Middle Ages, and may have had one of the most diverse populations in the Mayan world. This could be why the city has such a variety of architectural styles. Built in either the early or mid-5th century, by the 6th it was a significant power in the Maya culture, both politically and economically, and a centre for trade in the region. Many archaeologists believe that, unlike earlier Maya politics, Chikain Itza was ruled by a council of elite members rather than one individual. The city covered an area of at least 1.9 square miles and had many imposing stone buildings, including the famous Castillo Pyramid. The buildings were connected by a crisscrossing of at least 80 paved causeways at a time when many European cities did not have paved streets. The site would have been extremely colourful as the buildings were originally painted in pigments of red, green, blue and purple. Thirteen ball courts have been found at Chikain Itza, the Great Ball Court being the largest and best preserved, along with temples and steam baths. The large well or canote at the northern part of the site is thought to have been a place for human sacrifice. Dredging of the well produced many precious objects including jade, turquoise and gold, as well as human remains that displayed wounds suggesting that they were killed before being thrown in. Although the fall of Chikain Itza is a mystery, it is thought that the decline began in the mid-1200s, long before the fall of the Mayan civilization, well over 400 years later. Thank you for watching this episode of Medieval Madness, please do subscribe if you're enjoying the videos on this channel, and I'll see you next week for another video. Have a great week, cheers!